Alright, what is up guys? Austin here and welcome to the video and today I'm going to be going over a full day of eating of what I eat to stay lean. I haven't quite tracked food in a while so I'll be doing that for today's video. I usually just intuitively eat. I can usually eyeball or ballpark the amount of food that I'm eating because I've tracked for like five solid years. So I kind of have a good sense of how much food should look like. But I will be tracking along just to show you guys a sense of how much food should look like, how much in portion sizes and how many calories are in those portion sizes. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with tracking, I definitely recommend getting the app MyFitnessPal. It's a very comprehensive database of foods. You can literally type in the name of a food and it'll show you the exact amount of calories, the exact amount of uh, carbohydrates, fats, protein breakdown of that food. And also I wanted to add is that tracking is definitely a helpful tool for you to reach your goals but you definitely do not have to hit the exact calorie, hit the exact macro to get to your goals. One of the biggest mistakes I see is that people get way too stressed out about hitting the exact number of calories, hitting the exact number of macros that they need. And then this can definitely lead to developing a very bad relationship with food where people may go over by like 100 calories and get super stressed out. I know when I first started doing that, I, get, I would get really stressed out about it and that is definitely not something you want to do. Over the years, I've learned that it's actually okay to go a little bit under, a little bit over your calories. It's not too much of a big deal. Your body will find that kind of balance. If you actually took a step back and thought about it when you were younger and everyone intuitively ate when they were younger, unless you're some sort of weirdo who took, like, tracked your food, some days you would eat a little bit more, some days you, you would eat a little bit less. It's totally natural for your body to feel more hungry on some days and less hungry on other days. So for me personally, I say when you're tracking food, you can definitely give yourself kind of like a 10% leeway. So let's say your calorie intake is 2000 calories. You can give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. Some days you'll eat 10% less, some days you'll eat 10% more. And that's kind of a good range to be around. You definitely don't want to go too much or too low. The biggest thing that I want to drive home is definitely don't get tied up in all the numbers. The numbers is definitely a good place to start, a good place for you to get a sense of what, how much and what kind of foods to look for to help you maintain a healthy diet, follow that 80-20 rule. The ultimate goal, I believe, is to have those numbers as a guideline so that you can set up these healthy habits so that later you don't need to track your food, you don't need to weigh out every single thing that you're eating. Another thing that I definitely recommend getting if you're new to tracking is a food scale. I know that when I first started out, I didn't know portion sizes for meats and things that used volume measuring sizes like cups and other such things. The last thing I want to mention before we get into this is that the only two numbers that I want you guys to worry about are the number of calories that you're eating from day to day and the amount of protein you're getting on a daily basis. Carbs and fats, they don't really matter unless you're a professional athlete trying to get ready for a competition. You don't really need to worry about your carb or fat distribution ratio. I see a lot of people worry about their individual macros and they get super meticulous over it. And sometimes, for example, at the end of the day when they have like five more carbs to hit, they have to eat some weird combination of food just to get the exact amount of macros for the day. And I don't recommend you do that. It definitely just creates a lot of unnecessary stress and worry. All right, and with all the lecturing out of the way, let's actually find out how to find your maintenance calories. So if you find that you've been staying around the weight that you're at for quite some time, I would definitely just take about two weeks and track everything that you eat. Eat normally, don't change a thing at all, and track the amount of calories that you're eating right now, and that's going to be your maintenance calories. This is going to be 100% the most accurate way to determine your maintenance calories. It will be way more accurate than any formula that you find on the internet. If you don't want to go that route, if you just want to jump straight into it, I know personally I just like to get things done, then I'd say start with taking your body weight in pounds and multiplying it by 15. And this should give you a rough ballpark of your maintenance calories. It might be lower, it might be higher. If you notice yourself gaining weight, then just take away three to 500 calories. If you notice yourself losing weight, then just add three to 500 calories if those aren't your goals. If you want to maintain, then just keep playing around with those numbers until you find a number where you're maintaining weight. And then for protein, to shoot for one gram of protein per pound of body weight. There's definitely more than enough for a lot of people's needs. And some of the research actually shows you don't even need this much protein anyway. But I find that eating more protein is just better at help keeping you full. And when you're more full, you're less likely to eat junk and be able to maintain a more healthful diet. And of course, one gram of protein per pound of body weight is easy to remember. And the easier it is to remember, the more likely people are able to hit that goal. 
All right, and without further ado, let's get into it. So it is about 9 a.m. and I'm just having a cup of coffee. I've woken up about an hour ago and I usually just have a cup of coffee in the morning. I'm not too hungry. I'll probably eat in about like half an hour or so and I will check in with you guys for breakfast. All right, it is about 9.30 and I'm feeling quite peckish, so it is time for breakfast. And usually for breakfast, I've been having this for like the past few months. It is so good. It is anabolic French toast. It's Greg Doucette's recipe. If you don't know who that is, definitely check him out. He has a ton of anabolic recipes and they taste super good as well. High in protein, low in calories. That's all you need. And so for the recipe, you do need egg whites. I just use Kirkland brand egg whites, the uh, pint. I'll go in for about a cup of this, so usually it's about half the container. And that's, that's about half. And then a pro tip for measuring out liquids like that, you put the item on the scale, set it to zero, and then when you take it off, pour however much you need, and then put it back on, see how much you poured out, and that's a good way of telling you how much that you used. Second ingredient is uh, two packs of Splenda into the egg white mixture. And then the last two ingredients is some vanilla extract using a splash, I'd say about a teaspoon or so. And then some ground cinnamon, just however much you want. I love cinnamon, so I usually put a little bit more because I love cinnamon. Got to turn on the skillet. Last thing you want to do is whisk this mixture together. Next thing is you just take some regular ass bread as he says. Just regular bread, 70 calories. You definitely don't want too much calories in your bread. And then you want to go ahead and get your egg white mixture. And then soak your pieces of bread in there. Let it really get soaked. Almost to the point where it's like uncomfortably sopping wet. Throw it on the skillet or the pan or whatever you have and get it cooking. And then usually you'll have like a little bit of the mixture left and then you just pour that onto your bread. Let it soak up some of that mixture even more. I got cinnamon all over my fingers. Can't let that go to waste. All right, let that cook for about two to three minutes on each side. Next thing I'll do while I have this cooking is that I'll get some frozen blueberries. Pour about a cup of that into this bowl here. Time to flip these. And then while I have this cooking on the other side, I'm gonna take these blueberries, microwave them for about a minute and a half to two minutes. And then you wanna have them microwaved until you get about this like, kind of like liquidy, like sauce texture. All right, French toast should be done now. I'm gonna turn off the skillet. Got my sugar-free syrup here. And I like to just layer on the French toast blueberries sugar-free syrup I use about a quarter cup or so and there you have it breakfast is served all right and time to chow down Oh my god. 
is so good. And then the fact that this meal has so little calories, it is unreal. All right, guys, breakfast is down the hatch. I will get some editing done, get some studying done, and I will check in with you guys for meal number two. And so after breakfast, I usually wait about an hour, hour and a half, and then I will go hit the gym. Today is a rest day for my lifts, so I will go hit some cardio later on, and I will check in with you guys at meal number two. All right, guys, so just wrapped up a Costco run, and I'm feeling quite ravenous. It is like 2 p.m., and I don't know if I can make it home because I'm super hungry and just trying to stop my body from going catabolic so I actually did need to pick up some protein bars from Costco anyway it's just these uh, Kirkland protein bars and these are by far one of the best protein bars I've ever had and they are very affordable too they're like less than a dollar for a bar so I believe they have two variations of it um, they have a chocolate chip cookie dough and a chocolate brownie pack. And then this one, the one I got is the chocolate peanut butter chunk and the cookies and cream. So I'm just gonna be trying one of each. And this is just like a little snack to hold me over, just a little bit of protein, just to stimulate that muscle protein synthesis. I just have to start the car because it was way too hot. All right, first up we have the chocolate peanut butter chunk wow that's good definitely a very good protein bar uh, has a solid chew to it not too chalky and not too like really chewy as well so perfect texture Taste is on point, it actually tastes like a peanut butter cup, so we really nailed it. Alright, first bar is done. Moving on to the second one. Next up is the cookies and cream. This was pretty good, but definitely not as good as the first one. You can definitely taste the cookies in there, the cream not so much. Also, I don't know if it's just this bar or this flavor in particular, but it is a bit more chewy than the other one I had. So definitely have to work a lot more. Yeah, definitely have to chew a lot more. I can like feel it in my head, just with all the chewing. Oh, last bite right here. Overall, definitely very solid bars. I, I'd honestly say they are better than Quest bars and they're a lot cheaper too, a lot more affordable. So, definitely recommend them uh solid solid 9 out of 10 compared to a lot of other protein bars i've eaten those are very good anyways i'm gonna finish up my grocery run and i will see you guys back home all right guys so we are back from the store 
and I've got the second part of meal number two here. So this is actually another one of Greg Doucette's recipes. It's called apple goop. And like, it looks like an apple sludge, but trust me, it is so good. It tastes like the inside filling of apple pie. And it's basically just apples, oats, cinnamon. I add a little bit of nutmeg in there as well, just for the flavor and Splenda. And then for the filling part, it's like xanthan gum or gorgum mixed with water. Perfect. Makes it like nice and thick and it just tastes amazing. And I also added a little bit of frozen Cool Whip on there just as like, it's kind of like ice cream, but it's like a lower calorie option. And my mouth is honestly watering. So I'm just gonna dig in. Oh man. If you're anything like me and you love apple pie, I find that this is the perfect substitution for it. Personally for me, I don't really care too much about pie crust. So this does it for me. It tastes exactly like the filling. And Cool Whip, I do recommend getting the light or the fat-free version. So that saves up on a little bit of calories. And that wraps up meal two. Man, that was so good. So this by itself doesn't really have that much protein in it. It's more for the taste, more to keep the cravings at bay. So that's why I supplemented it with the protein bars. So I am nice and full now. That should keep me pretty full until dinner time, which is in about a few hours. So I will check in with you guys then. All right, what is up guys? It is about 6 p.m. now. So I usually start cooking dinner around this time. And tonight we are gonna be making some homemade pizzas. So for the crust, I've been using these pitas that I got from Costco. They are 200 calories each. They're actually pretty filling, I find. So it's a very nice base compared to a lot of other uh, types of flatbreads and other tortillas and stuff that I've tried to use as pizza crust. It doesn't turn out that well, but these are like nice and thick. They hold up pretty well. They get pretty crispy in the oven too. So I find that they are excellent for pizza crust if you guys are looking for something to use as pizza crust. And then for the sauce, I just use tomato sauce. You can use pre-mixed pizza sauce if you want. But personally, I just like tomato sauce because then I can flavor it myself. And then of course, we've got part skim mozzarella cheese. And then for the protein source, I'm just gonna be using some chicken breasts. So we got the chicken going on the cast iron pan now. I personally just like to use cast iron. I think it really imparts a really good flavor on meats. I will sear it for about a few minutes just to get the right amount of color that I want and then I will finish it off in the oven. I've got that preheating at 400 degrees. And then for the seasonings, I've just got pepper, this uh, buttery steakhouse blend. I highly recommend. I got it from Costco. It is so good. Some garlic powder, more salt because I love my food salty and have flavor, and paprika. So we're gonna get that chicken cooking. I'm gonna chop up some veggies and then I will check in with you guys afterwards. All right, so the chicken is done and still got the veggies going. They need to saute a little bit longer. I just put the pitas into the oven. They go in for about five minutes. And yeah, when everything's done, I will assemble the pizzas and then we will get into meal number three. All right guys, so here's the lineup. We have the chicken and veggies. Turns out the chicken was a little raw. I like my meat raw, but not that raw. And so we have the pizzas here. And so I usually like to do this like separate thing where I have a bowl of veggies and meat and I build it. So that way, whatever I don't use, I kind of have like a second meal over here. So it feels like I'm eating more food. I also do like my bigger meals to be at dinner. I just personally like eating more at night. Although it doesn't really seem like nighttime, it is like super sunny out. 
it is 647 here. And so I will build this. All right, so we got pizza number one here. Oh yeah. Honestly, I love this pita bread because it holds the shape and it kind of tastes like pizza crust if you put the right seasonings on it. So that garlic bread seasoning is on point. All right, last bite of chicken here. Delicious as always. All right, so some things that I want to address this meal is that because I have a bigger appetite at night, I will eat more low calorie dense foods that includes uh, chicken breast, other lean sources of protein, uh, more veggies. For me, I usually pick about four vegetables that I really like and I will season them however. Tonight was kind of like an Italianish night, so I used a lot of Italian seasonings and all that for the flavor. And other nights, if it's like Mexican night, I will use more cumin, use more chili powder. So you, you can just change up your seasonings for whatever type of meal you're having. And then I will eat like a moderate amount of carbs. As you can see, I only had two pitas. That's about 400 calories of carbs, if not too much. I don't really want to eat as much less satiating foods like pita breads and all that. I'd rather eat more filling foods. That way I feel more full. And then the carbs are just more for flavor, more just to be there so that I can enjoy my meal more. I'm definitely not trying to advocate a low carb meal plan, but just eating a moderate amount of carbs definitely helps cut down on the amount of calories. You don't have to cut out carbs completely, but definitely watch how much you're eating. Simply put, eat whatever foods you want, eat whatever foods you enjoy, but eat in moderation. Anyways, time to do dishes. I'm gonna finish up this movie here and then I will see you guys for the nightcap. All right guys, so for the last meal of the day, I'm gonna be making some protein ice cream. So what you'll need is sugar-free, fat-free Jello mix, some gorgum or xanthan gum, one packet of Splenda or zero calorie sweetener, some powdered peanut butter, chocolate syrup, sugar-free chocolate syrup, almond milk, and then of course protein powder. I like to use a mix of casein and whey. You can use either one, but I prefer casein right before bed just because of a slow digesting protein for the overnight fast when you're sleeping. And so first thing I want to add is about half a cup of almond milk. Forgot to mention, but frozen strawberries, about a cup's worth. And then I put about double the amount, so about two cups worth of ice. And then about a couple tablespoons of sugar-free chocolate syrup. Put in the Splenda. One scoop of casein. And then half a scoop of whey. And then for the pudding mix, you wanna put in a quarter of the package, which is, according to this, it's 11 grams. And then a quarter teaspoon of gorgum or xanthan gum just uh, as a thickener agent. And then about one serving of the PB2 or peanut butter powder. I just use great value, it's a lot cheaper. So one serving of that is about two tablespoons, just eyeballing it here. All right, and then after everything's added, just go ahead and blend this up. All right, so just a heads up that blending this is definitely not like blending your typical smoothie. It's gonna feel like your blender is gonna wanna explode and it's gonna be super loud because it's super thick and your blender is just gonna be trying to blend through that. But you just gotta keep pushing through. You just gotta keep shoving down all the ingredients. And I will show you guys exactly what I mean in a second. So momentarily, you're gonna have to turn it off and just like shove down all the ingredients manually mix it and then you want to start it up again afterwards.
And then you'd have to shove it down a few times in order to get it right. Believe me, it is an arm workout within itself, but it is definitely worth it in the end. I promise you. All right, and so you'll know you've done it when you achieve this kind of consistency. It's like not super icy, but it's also like really thick. And then you gotta pass, of course, the blizzard challenge test where it doesn't fall out when you flip it upside down. And there we have it, the protein ice cream. All right, last meal of the day, protein ice cream. And I usually just chill. I'll usually have this about an hour before I go to bed. And I'll just chill, have this, and like watch an episode of The Office or something on Netflix. All right, so that does it for the day and the night. Very good. Last feeding of protein for the day. Booping up the calories for the meal and the total on the screen there. And one of the things I want to talk about before I head off to bed is that maintaining a healthy diet does not mean that you have to cut out all the foods that you love. It's about finding those substitutions so that you can have your favorite foods more often. You can have the full fat, the full unhealthy version once in a while, but you can't have them too frequently. Instead, I just do substitutions of my favorite foods and that way I can have them more frequently and I don't really crave them all that much. For example, some of the meals that I've had today aren't even traditional meals. Like you see some people who have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they'll have like your typical meals. Like for breakfast, they'll have bacon and eggs. Lunch, they'll have like a sandwich. Dinner, they'll have uh, like steak or something. I have these meals that are like pretty much all sweets, all like dessert foods and I love it and it fits into my diet and I get to eat it every day. I enjoy what I eat all while being able to maintain a lean physique and have a well-rounded diet. And all in all, I believe that calories is all that matters while also incorporating healthy foods that have micronutrients like fruits and vegetables in like a good majority of your diet, but it doesn't ha have to be all that you eat. And yeah, one of the things I wanna talk about is that eating healthy and trying to maintain your calories doesn't have to be just about eating chicken breast and broccoli and rice and having these plain and boring diets, just eating meat, rice, vegetables, unseasoned. It, you can definitely use artificial sweeteners, use all these substitutes to make your favorite foods more healthy and lower calories. I believe in a non-restrictive diet that can incorporate all your favorite foods. That way you don't have to restrict and that inevitably leads to you binging or even worse, just giving up. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the types of food that I eat on a daily basis. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.